الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ويسق الله سبحانه وتعالى that he makes us of those who fast with iman and ihtisab ويسق الله سبحانه وتعالى that he pardons us and he accepts everything that we put forth and he makes us of those who he frees from the fire this is another session where we are looking at a hadith from the chapter of wujub sum ramadan of the creation of fasting the month of Ramadan وبيان فضل السيام and the explanations of the virtues surrounding السيام taken from the book Riyad al-Salihim in Kalam Sayyid al-Musleen by Imam Abi Dhakiriya al-Nawwi rahimahullah with the explanation of our Shaykh Muhammad al-Uthaymeen and in our last session we looked at how the author began this chapter by giving us the ayat of Siyam. And the main focus of that was to establish the purpose of Siyam, which is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ so that you may attain taqwa. Taqwa is where a person does good deeds and they stay away from doing anything which is not beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the purpose of Siyam. This is the meaning of at taqwa And quite often at taqwa is translated as being conscious of Allah or God consciousness or something similar. With this now we can see this next hadith, which is that when a person is fasting, he is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's conscious of pleasing him and staying away from his disobedience. And if a person does that, we will see, as we have said, this is a book of Fadila, we will see the virtues and the rewards for a person who establishes the fasting in a manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, attaining taqwa for himself. Now this hadith has been reported by Bukhari and Muslim. And Imam al nawawi rahimahullah gives us the main text. Now this is very important when it comes to sciences of hadith. You can have a narration and you've got the main body of the text. Then you've got alternative wordings coming from the same narrator. Now the ulama have mentioned, now obviously each situation is different, but the ulama have mentioned that there are a number of reasons why this could occur. It could be that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has said it more than once. And that is possible because he had nine Ramadans. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now in that, if it's a reflection for us all, I mean for us, for many of us, we've seen many Ramadans. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, the best of mankind, only saw nine. And in it, there is a, a night which is better than a thousand months. The best of mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that he only had nine. So think about the virtue and the honor and the opportunity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you every single year in seeing this month and inshallah making of you making you from those who meet Laylatul Qadr and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that night. It is possible that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said this more than once. It is also possible that the narrators have narrated it differently. But as long as the chain is authentic, then all of those variations are accepted. So now here we have a narration which is Bukhari and Muslim. Then we've got an addition to it which is found only in Bukhari. And then we've got another addition to this main body of hadith with a version which is only found in Muslim. On the authority of Bukhari, he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that Allah said, this is known as Hadith Qudsi. Now the majority of the ulama have said that this is Hadith Qudsi, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he worded it in a wording which he wanted to himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So meaning from Allah and the wording from the Messenger of Allah Others from the ulama have said, look, an Abi Huraira qal, Abu Huraira said, qal Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, qal Allah. As long as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying is qal Allah, then the Qudsi, the Hadith Qudsi, the wording is from Allah as well. This is again another benefit in Muslim Hadith where the scholars have differed. What seems to be apparent is that the wording is from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the argument given by the majority of the ulama that the wording is from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but the meaning from Allah is that it then differentiates the Hadith Qudsi from the Qur'an. Whatever the case, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said this. Whether the wording we have 
is from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, or from him himself, Subhana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now look at this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this coming hadith talks about the nobility and the virtue of the people who fast that he himself talks about them. Kullu amal ibn Adam lah illa siyam. Every action for the son of Adam is for him except for siyam. Why except for siyam? Ibn Thaymin rahimahullah says that there is a number of reasons why. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here that fasting is for me, for innahu li wa ana ajzibih. He fasted for me and I will reward it. Meaning that the person has got ikhlas in fasting. Meaning, when it comes to salah, everybody, everybody can see that you're standing. When it comes to zakat, everybody or the people know that you have paid it. The person who has received it, the person who has benefited. When it comes to hajj, when it comes to all these other acts of worship. As for siyam, this is just between you and Allah. Nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you make your suhoor in the morning, what's your intention? Allah knows. A moment before Maghrib, you will not eat. When you are certain now that it's Maghrib, then you will break your fast. Why do you do that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is going inside of your heart and act of worship. For inna hu li, he was doing this for me. Wa ana So this is the first benefit with Amin Rahim wa The second benefit for inna hu li wa ana This is for me and I will reward it. It's connected to the first one in a way where he is saying with Amin Rahim when it comes to other acts of worship, predominantly many acts of worship, it involves other people. We prayed salah and jama'ah. You can't do hajj by yourself. You can't do zakat by yourself. You need to have somebody to receive, someone to give, etc. As for fasting, this is again something which is intimate and personal between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit from this now, he says, He fasted for me. So I personally will reward it Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And again, similar to what we have said before, this is what Uthameen is saying here, on the Day of Judgment, when you've got certain deeds that you have done, perhaps you've not done them correctly in relationship to other people. So maybe you might have to expiate. Maybe you've done something wrong to transgress the rights of other people, maybe you have to expiate. But when it comes to fasting, this is between you and Allah. And because you have done this for the sake of Allah, if there is something missing, if there is something which is excellent, what an ajib. Hadith Qudsi connecting the Sa'im to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yawm al Qiyamah, the Qabr before that, as we will see in tomorrow's hadith, that it will come and it will intercede, and the Day of Judgment. Wa Siyam Jannah, the Messenger of Allah sallam, continues. Fasting is a shield. Now why is it a shield? Because the person who fasts correctly attains taqwa. This is what the Shaykh is saying here. The person has sabr. Sabr in doing those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and is pleased with. And sabr with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing him with, whether it comes to sins or whether it comes to general qadr of Allah. You could be walking down the road, the wind hits you. Sabr. You could be driving and somebody cuts you off. Sabr. Siyam Junna. The person recognizes that he is fasting, so he checks himself. And it creates a shield and a barrier. Between what? And this is the definition of many of the ulama of the Salaf as to what is taqwa. Al wiqaya baynahu wa bayn nar. Meaning there is a protection and a barrier between him and the fire. Therefore, the siyam becomes a junna, it becomes a shield because of the taqwa that the person is attaining. If there is a day which one of you are fasting, Now look at this here, in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if there is a day that one of you is fasting, then don't have any obscene speech that comes out of you, and do not have any foul speech that comes out of you. Nothing which is not beloved to Allah in the things that you say and the way that you say. 
فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَسْخَ I mean, the selection of words, and it might not even be a selection of words, it might even just be the way that you say it. فَإِنْ سَابْ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتُنَا If anybody insults you, if anybody tries to uh, attack you, فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ Then he should say that I am fasting. Why? Because this person now is creating again and reminding himself and people around him that he has got a barrier between himself and the hellfire and he is attaining taqwa. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ Muhammad بِيَدِهِ By the one whose Muhammad's soul in his, in, is in his hands. لَخُلُوفَ مِسَّائِمْ أَتِيَبَ عِنْدُ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيهِ الْمِسْكِ The odor that comes out of the, fa- of the mouth of the person who is fasting is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the scent of misk, than the scent of perfume. And again, this goes back to the virtue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the people who are fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the life of this dunya and exchange for them Yawm Al-Qiyamah this is the meaning with some of the ulama that they will be perfumed and they will be completed in the akhirah because of their fasting in the dunya so the meaning here Atiyabu Indullah Min Rihim Misk that this person will have whatever comes out of him but it's more beloved to Allah meaning in the life of this dunya this person is striving and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates that and is shakur more than had he had a pleasant mouth with odor coming out. But then the second meaning with some of the ulama, أَتْيَبْ عِنْدُ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيْهِ الْمِسْقِ Meaning يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exchange it for him and replace it for him. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِلصَّائِمْ فَرْحَتَانْ يَفْرَحُهُمَا The person who is fasting has two times in his life when he is really happy. إِذَا أَفْتَرْ فَرِحَ بِفِطْرِهِ When he breaks his fast, he becomes happy. Now, everybody knows that iftar is a time that most people look forward to. And Thaymeen Rahimahullah says here, there's an obvious meaning and there's a, a hidden meaning, or non-obvious meaning. As for the obvious meaning, the Shaykh is saying here, Hafizahullah, Rahimahullah, that the person becomes happy at the time of breaking his fast, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now has permitted for him to eat and drink and do the rest of the things that he has abstained from. So this person becomes happy because now that the person can move from one act of worship to then accepting the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking him for it. And accepting his ni'm. But then there's another one here. And like I said, I would perhaps say that this is hidden from most people. Now the meaning of the Messenger of Allah is saying here that the people, they are the happiest when they are breaking their fast, is at the time of iftar, is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated for them to do an act of worship which is beloved to Him. So when you have completed an act of worship, this should increase a person in happiness and rejoice that they have been able to do an act of worship which is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah manna alayhi bi itmam hadhi al farila. This is what Muthaymin is saying here. That's the first time when he is happy. The second time when he is happy, wa ida laki rabbah. When he meets his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, fariha bi sawmih. He will be happy because of his fasting. And this explains what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the beginning of the hadith, which is, وَأَنَا أَجْزِي I will reward it. And Uthaymeen rahimahullah is saying here, the reward is hidden. The reward is unknown. Unlike many acts of worship, when you pray in Jama'ah 25, 27, when you do certain acts of worship, you recite in the Qur'an, every single letter is times 10. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, here, fasting is for me and I will reward it. I will reward it. So when the person goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having fasted and completed all of his fasts in a manner that is beloved to him, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him in a way that he will become ecstatic. That's the main body of the hadith. Imam Bukhari rahimahullah has an extra wording. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts about his servant. And he says, يَتْرُقُ الطَّعَامُهُ وَالشَّرَابُهُ وَالشَّهْوَةُ مِنْ أَجْلِي He left off food, he left off drink, he left off his desires because of me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts about the person who is fasting, about you. السِّيَامُ لِي وَأَنَا أَذْزِيبِهِ Fasting. Now, Ibn Taymin, rahimahullah, is saying here, السِّيَامُ The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has used it in its um, مُعَرَّف form, which is the indefinite form, meaning all the fasting is for me. This act of worship is for me, and I will reward it. وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِأَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا And every single good deed is multiplied by ten. And in the next hadith, in the version of Muslim, كل عمل ابن آدم يضعف حسنة بأشر أمثالها All of the actions of Ibn Adam is multiplied by ten. This is from the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when any act of obedience, except for siyam as we will see from the remaining of the hadith. But when you do tasbih, subhanallah, with Allah it is not one. With Allah it is a minimum of ten إلى سبع مئة ديح. And depending on the ikhlas, depending on the khushu, depending on several factors that the ulama have mentioned, it can even then be multiplied to 700. You've done one act of worship, it is multiplied by 700. That's the Prophet that we are talking about with al Ghani and Rahman. Qala ta'ala, then he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, illa sawm, except for fasting. Fasting is in its own category. It's not from the 10 to the 700. إِلَّا الصَّوْمِ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا زِيبِهِ So what is the reward for fasting? Open check. Nobody knows. يَدْعُ الشَّهَوَاتُ وَالطَّعَامُ مِنْ أَجْلِ He has left off his desires. He's left off his food. Because of me, لِسَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ The fasting person has two times when he rejoices. فَرْحَةٌ in the فِطْرِهِ and another explanation that the ulama have mentioned here, farhatun in the fitri, is that when he makes du'a, the du'a will be accepted. This is a time when more specified that du'a is even more encouraged and more, most likely for it to be accepted. farhatun in the liqa'i rabbih. And the second time when he will rejoice is when he meets his, lo- when he meets his Lord. وَلَا خُلُوفِ فِي أَطْيَبُ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيهِ الْمِسْكِ Similar to what we said before, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the scent that comes out of this person is more beloved from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the scent of perfume. With this, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says, that this places the dunya in its proper place. Which is that the person is fasting, and he leaves off the dunya seeking the akhirah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace the person what he has left from the morsels of food, from the sips of water, from the temporary pleasures that he has in the life of this dunya, because of his fasting, with something far greater in the akhirah. One of the things that we learn from this hadith is that it places the dunya for where it actually belongs. And the person who is fasting should be achieving this meaning whilst he is fasting so that he will be rewarded with it when he returns back to his Lord. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those who fast in a manner that is beloved to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts our fasting and all of our acts of worship during this month. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his reward in the dunya and in the akhirah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those who rejoice not only at the time of iftar, but on the day when we meet him, Subhana. Subhana kullahumma bihamdik, shalom Allah ilayna, and istaghfiru kawatu bihamdik.